In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a very simple house in SketchUp. And this video is for absolute beginners. So I'm not going to go into every technical detail and we're not going to frame the walls with, with two by fours or two by sixes and all that. We're just going to model essentially the shape of a house and then we'll add some colors and textures to it. That way, you can get an idea of how to use SketchUp and you can start modeling houses in it. So the first thing I'll do before I get started is I'll change this background to have a blue sky and sort of a green ground that looks like grass. And you may find that a little bit better to work in. It looks a little nicer. So if you go right here on these tools, you've got um, this little rectangle and a cylinder. Click on that. That's your styles. And if you go down here to default styles, you can change the background just like that. So if you're in the SketchUp Pro version, you'll find that by at the top of the page going to window, a drop down will pop up and there's styles under window. But I'm in the free version of SketchUp because this is for absolute beginners and I figured that's what most people are probably using. So the first thing you want to do when learning SketchUp is learn the tools. So all of your tools are here. And if you click on some of the tools, you'll notice there are other other tools in a drop down that pops out. And each tool has a shortcut that you can simply type a letter on your keyboard and you'll find that tool. So the first tool I'm going to use is the rectangle tool, which I just selected here. And the shortcut to it is R on your keyboard. So if I were here in the selector tool, which is this one, which is also spaceboard on your keyboard, and I wanted to quickly jump to the rectangle tool, I would hit R. So I highly advise learning the shortcuts as it will save you a ton of time in SketchUp. So now that we have the rectangle tool, what I want to do is draw a, basically a foundation for the model of our house. Now notice it has a green, rectangle. If I were to click where these, uh, where the blue axis, green axis, and red axis meet right here at the center point, I could start dragging a rectangle. But because it's on the green axis, it's drawing one in this vertical and horizontal direction, and I would prefer that it were on the ground. So the way that you change the axis in relation to whatever you're drawing is you hit the up arrow key for the blue axis, and that's the one we want to draw a foundation. You would hit the left arrow key for green, right arrow key for red, but let's hit the up arrow key, and that's going to give us a rectangle on the ground, essentially. So um, I clicked once with this rectangle tool, and now I'm just moving my mouse around, and it's changing the dimensions of the rectangle. What you can do is click after you've decided where you want it. And if you want exact dimensions, you can just type them in. So I'm gonna type in 20 apostrophe comma 20 apostrophe. And so the dimensions are right here as I type them and apostrophe is just to abbreviate foot. So if I were to type in 20 comma 20, it would give me a 20 inch by 20 inch square. So if I type in 20 apostrophe comma 20 apostrophe enter, it's a 20 foot by 20 foot square. So we'll just model a very simple house right off of this little square here. And if you wanna delete this guy, you can hit spacebar for the selector tool, click on him, hit the delete key on your keyboard, and he's gone. So um, now what I would recommend doing is avoiding too much details at first when you're just learning SketchUp. I'm not going to actually frame walls, like I said. So what we wanna do is create four walls in the fastest and simplest way possible. And the way that you would do that is you would use the offset tool, which you can find right here. Um, by default, the push-pull tool will be on this toolbar here. If you click on it, the offset tool is the last one here. And again, the shortcut for it is just F on your keyboard. So now we have the offset tool and we can just click and drag along here. And what we're gonna do is type in four, enter. And that's gonna give us a four inch space between the square on the inside and the square on the outside. And we're gonna just drag that um, 
four inch space upwards to create walls. So the way that you would do that is you would hit P, which is the push pull tool. Click right there. And if you're having trouble selecting it, I'm gonna go back. You can, with your selector tool, which is this one, or space bar on your keyboard, you can click on the face of that outer edge, hit P, and just click on it and drag it upwards. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna type in the height that I want, which is 10 feet. So I could either type in 10 apostrophe, or I could type in 120, which is 10 feet in inches. So now we've got a 10 foot wall all the way around our building. And so again, this lacks all the details of an actual construction drawing with framing and all of that. But for beginners, I would highly recommend doing it this way just to get familiar with SketchUp. So now we're going to make the shape of a roof. So we're gonna give this a very simple gable roof. And the best way to do that for beginners is to take your line tool, which is L on your keyboard, or you could find it right here in the toolbar as well. And if you just hover along the edge of this wall, start working your way towards the middle and you'll find a little blue dot, here it is, and that's the midpoint of this wall. So it automatically snaps to it when you get close and you can just click once and pull upwards and you want your line going along the blue axis. If you're at a funny angle and you can't get it locked into the blue axis like this, all you have to do is hit the up arrow on your keyboard and now you're locked into the blue axis. So no matter which way you go, you can't go wrong. So we're locked into the blue axis and I'm going to type in nine, six, enter. So that's 96 inches or eight feet. And from this top point, I'm going to draw a line all the way to the outer corner here. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. And I'll take the eraser tool, which you can find right here, or you can hit E for the shortcut. I'm gonna delete these two lines here. Now I'll hit O, which is the orbit tool, and you'll use the orbit tool a lot as you just move around in your project. I'm gonna come over here to the back side and hit L for the line tool. Click on this top point here, and I want it along the green axis. So again, if you're having trouble with that, you can hit the left arrow key, and now it's locked in, so you can't miss. And since our building is 20 feet long, we're going to type in 20, apostrophe, enter. And so now we've got a 20 foot line right here on the ridge. And from that dot to the outer corner here, I'm going to draw a line and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So now if we orbit around our project, we've got a simple house or a simple shape of a house. I'm gonna go back and with the eraser tool, which is E, I'm going to erase this line. And so in this, video, I'm going to keep it very simple. We're going to add some windows and doors, and we're going to paint this to look more like a house, add some sort of textures on the side of it here. And we may do a little bit more, but I don't want to overload you. Again, this is for absolute beginners. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll paint this to look like a house, or we can add all sorts of textures like brick and wood and things like that. So the way that you do that is you can click on the paint tool, which is this bucket here, or you can just hit B on your keyboard. And this brings up all, all the um, textures and surfaces that you can use in SketchUp. Now it may by default open up this page where you've got a bunch of colors. You'll want to go to the magnifying glass, which is the browse icon. Click on that and it will bring up all sorts of materials. So right here is brick, cladding, and siding. Let's click on that. And you could add brick to the siding here. You could add these horizontal planks. Um, I'm gonna go with this one here that kind of looks like cedar boards vertically. So I'm going to orbit around my project and hit B for paint. And since the last thing I selected was this, it will be on that by default. So I can just click this to paint this face, hit O to orbit, hit B for the paint tool, and just keep doing that around the building. Now we're gonna add something to the roof. So let's close this drop down for siding and go down here to roofing. So you've got multiple options here. You could go with shingles up top, you could go with metal roof. We'll just go with a metal roof this time, kind of have this uh, barn look. 
and then I'll orbit around and since I used the metal roof last time when I hit B it will automatically be loaded on my paint tool and so now we have the basic shape of a house with some materials that kind of make it more aesthetically pleasing now I'll show you what I would do to make a door and a window or several windows in this house and again we're not going to um, frame every little detail of the door in this video this is this is more for beginners just to learn SketchUp so what I would do if I wanted a door right in the center here there's a couple ways you could go about that but here's a very simple way for just learning this so I would hit L for the line tool I'd find the center again by hovering on this line here there's my midpoint and I click on that and draw that up to the top of the gable here that splits this down the middle to give me an idea of where center is. So now I'm going to use the tape measure tool, which is T, and I'm going to click anywhere on the bottom line here and just drag it upwards along the blue axis. And again, if somehow you got mixed up where it wasn't on the blue axis, you could hit the up arrow key and it's gonna lock it into the blue axis. So we'll type in 82. So now we've got a line that's 82 inches high. And now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and use the tape tool to make the door 36 inches wide. So I'll just pull 18 off of this line. Just pull this direction, type in 18, hit enter. Do the same thing this way, 18, enter. And then we'll hit L for the line tool. and we'll just trace these. It will automatically snap into the intersections here. Okay, now we've drawn the lines around our door. So if we wanted to, we could hit E for the eraser tool and we could erase these dotted lines here. I also erased that uh, line we drew up the middle. And so all you have to do is hit spacebar for the selector tool and you could click on this door, hit delete, and because our walls are actually two pieces, they're basically a hollow space um, that sits between those, those two lines that made the little four inch border around our slab there. There's actually two things to click on. So we'll click on this one too and hit delete. And now we have a door that goes inside of our house. So if you wanted to add some trim to this, what you could do is use the tape tool and pull it out we'll say three inches. We're just gonna make some three inch trim here. So with the tape tool, I'm just making some guidelines. Three inches. And so now I can hit L for the line tool and I can trace these lines here. Oops. And if you ever have to go back, you can hit Command Z or Control Z on, on Windows, I'm on Mac or you could just delete it with the eraser tool. Okay, so now we've traced the lines around it. I'm gonna delete these tape measure marks again. I'm gonna hit B for the paint tool, which is already pulled up. And if I look in the drop downs here, there's one for colors. I could select a white trim. I'll just paint it right here, just click once. And so now we have a door with trim around it. Okay, and now let's make some windows. So I'll make some windows down here, some basic square and rectangular windows, but let me show you a way to make some pretty cool windows up in the gable here. If I take the line tool and I just draw a straight line across the top here, I could use the offset tool, which you'll find in here, offset, or you could hit F on your keyboard and I could make a triangular window and if I wanted to have two triangular windows I could do this I could hit L for the line tool split this down the middle hit F for the offset tool and then I'll give these a six inch border so I'll just click and drag it a little bit let off type six hit enter and then now with my selector tool, which is spacebar, I'll click on this face. I'll hit F for the offset tool and I'll do the same thing. I'll pull it out, hit six, hit enter. And then 
when you're making windows in here, you don't have to just click and make a hole through it like we did with this uh, door. You can go to B for the paint tool and there's actually a glass and mirrors section here. So we're gonna make this glass. And if you look, it actually shows you on the inside of the window there, but it has a little glare, makes it look like glass. So I'll delete these lines that I made. And now we've got two windows up top there. Now let's make some windows down below. So what I would probably do is draw a line from the top of this door to here. And I'll do the same thing over here. And that will just give me a reference point. And now what I can do is hit F for the offset tool. And I could just make a window just like this. So we'll try a window, we'll type in 24. That's two feet, that's gonna be two feet from this line to this line up here. And the same here and here. So um, the offset tool just makes a shape inside of a shape. And the number that you type in is the distance from the edge of the inner shape to the edge of the outer shape. So we'll do the same thing over here. And then I'll show you how to move these windows around if you don't like where they're at. So with the selector tool, which is spacebar, I'll click on this face. I'll hit F for offset and I'll make one again, 24 inches. And then we can hit B for the paint tool. We could use these glass things here. Now we've got windows, but they look pretty low. So let's say we wanted to move them up. Well, first, before I get to that, I'll delete these two lines that I made here. And if I wanted to move them both up, I could double click on the window. So just to let you know, if you click once, it will select the face. If you click twice, it will select the face and the edges touching that face. And if you triple click, it will select everything that's touching it. So usually when we make models, we'll make everything into separate components. That way you can't mess them up, you can't alter them, it won't warp things when you try to move one thing that's actually connected to another, but we'll talk about that in a later video. In this one, just double click on these windows, and if you hold shift, you can double click on this window, and now we've got them both selected. So with the move tool, which is M on your keyboard, I'm going to move them up. We'll go up along the blue axis. So remember, if we were lost right here, we could hit the up arrow key. It would lock us on the blue axis. We'll just move them up 10 inches from where they were. So I typed in 10, hit enter. And so now they're a little bit higher than they were. Use O for the orbit tool. And again, if you wanted to add trim to these windows, you could, just like we did with the door, you could use the tape tool and pull it out three inches or so and do this all the way around. Or if you wanted to, you could hit F for the offset tool. You could basically trace this and type in three. Now you have three inch border all the way around that. We'll do that here. Select this with the selector tool, F for offset. Pull this out, three inches. And then go to the paint tool, which is B. And we could just paint that trim piece white. And that's a lot faster than using the tape measure to draw guidelines around it. So now we've got two windows, a door, and somewhat of a house. So again, this is just a basic video. Um, we're not going to go into every little thing. If you were wanting to get an idea of a house you had in mind, this is a good way to do it. If you wanted to start working on the inside, one way that you could do that is to delete one wall and maybe even the roof. And that way it would open up the house and allow you to work on the inside of it. So we'll do that. We'll just hit spacebar for the selector tool. Click this wall here, delete, click this wall, delete. And so now we can see inside the house. And if you decided you needed more room, you could click on this section of the roof and hit delete. And now from one side, you can work on exterior details and get an idea of that. And on the other side, you have access to the inside where if you wanted to, you could draw things in here. Like if we wanted a loft, 
one way that you could do that is you could make a rectangle. I'll use the rectangle tool. And we'll make this one nine feet, comma, six by six inches. And I could hit P for the push pull tool and just pull this across here. So there's a simple way to make a loft. Now the downside to doing stuff like this is we did not make any components. So trying to move and manipulate some of these things may be difficult, but I think that you'll find this is a great first model for learning SketchUp. Uh, once you start running into problems with this sort of model and you need more technical detail and you need everything to be its own component and you wanna do framing, be sure to check out the other videos I have on this channel and um, let me know if there's anything I can do better in these tutorials. Um, my goal is to help you learn SketchUp, so if there's a way I can do that better, please let me know. But for now, I'm going to leave it at this, a basic model in SketchUp for beginners. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.